Hey guys, this is Ben Cat, and today we are going to talk about our favorite computer company, or maybe not, Apple Incorporated. There are certain things that Apple does great, and there are certain things that Apple can definitely do a lot better. And in this video, we are going to cover both. First up is build quality. Apple seriously nails build quality. In fact, Apple products most likely have the best build quality in the industry. If you've owned a MacBook Pro, you know this pretty well. I mean, it's an all aluminum chassis with very balanced design. You can lift up the display with one finger. Apple nails build quality. The second is the trackpad. Apple makes amazing trackpads. If you've ever used an Apple notebook, you know this very well. Apple laptop trackpads are so much better than any other laptop trackpads out there. There are some really good Windows laptop trackpads like the Dell XPS line, but they don't come anywhere close to the tracking precision of the Apple trackpads. Apple trackpads, good to go. Next up is the optimization of applications for the Mac OS platform. Apple creates its applications to sync very well with Macs. An example of this is Final Cut Pro, the low-end MacBook with a 1.1 gigahertz chip, Intel Core M chip, can actually render 4K footage thanks to the optimization of Final Cut Pro and Mac OS. Next up is creating a successful ecosystem. Okay, well, Google has a successful ecosystem too, but I mean, Apple, you, you've got to give it some credit. It's a very, very niche family of products. The reason people keep using iPhones is not because iPhones are much better than Androids. They're not. The real reason is because it's in an ecosystem of Apple products. Apple works like this. You buy one product and you see that this product goes very well with another product. So you decide to buy that other product and then you realize Hmm, well, maybe I should get a MacBook Pro too because I have an iPhone and watch OS and I can receive messages on my MacBook Pro. So let's buy the MacBook Pro as well. Apple's ecosystem is extremely synced and because of this, it's a pro. Finally, we have creativity and coding. Apple encourages creativity with the everyone can create project and it encourages coding with the Everyone Can Code project. With the Everyone Can Create project, there are lessons for kids where they can just follow along and create videos and educational art content and whatnot. With the Everyone Can Code initiative, Apple has released extensive documentation on its Swift programming language. It has included a ton of Swift tutorials. I would not recommend starting anywhere else if you want to learn iOS programming. And now five things that Apple can do better. Catering to the pro market. Like seriously, Apple does not cater to the pro market well, despite what you might think. The MacBook Pro isn't really that pro anymore. I mean, it doesn't even have an SD card slot. What kind of pro device doesn't have an SD card slot? And the Mac Pro, oh my gosh, it, that is insane. It is a 2013 trash can Mac that cannot be upgraded in almost any way possible. Pro users want that. They want upgradability. They want to be able to mess around with things. They want to be able to take advantage of every single piece of hardware. Apple doesn't cater to its pro users very well. The mice, Mighty Mouse, Magic Mouse, Magic Mouse 2, Apple has a history of making terrible, just god-awful mice. It's just insane. And it's ironic because Apple makes amazing trackpads, which virtually act like mice. Then they make terrible, just awful mice. I hate the experience of using an Apple mouse. Communication with consumers. Apple's tech support is trash. It's just... There's nothing better I can say about it, it's trash. I mean, I called Apple's tech support once for an iMovie issue where the audio in my files, for some reason, 
was getting cut off when I exported a video. Apple kept me on hold for so long. It took me like five hours in the call. Still, I was unable to fix my problem. The company also often fails to report important information, the most famous of which slowing down iPhones in order to conserve battery life. They fail to really say why these iPhones become extremely slow. Taking responsibility for failures. Apple is a serious narcissist, whether it comes to the 2010 MacBook Pro GPU issues, the MacBook Butterfly keyboard issues that we're experiencing right now, or admitting that the Mac Pro 2013 was an absolute failure. Apple hates to take responsibility. Finally, Apple needs to think before removing things. Apple's history of removing things is actually very dated. In 1998, when the original iMac came out, they removed the floppy disk drive, which seemed like a big thing at the time. Well, come 2012, the MacBook Pro line was refreshed and Apple introduced the Retina MacBook Pro line. This did not have any CD drive it did not have an ethernet port. Unexpected, unprecedented. Some users were not very happy about this. Fast forward to 2016. Apple releases a MacBook Pro with absolutely no ports except for USB-C. Like seriously, not even an SD card slot or an HDMI adapter. Not many devices use USB-C, even now in 2018. I mean, it's growing, but it's not to the point where we can live without your regular USB-A or SD card slots or HDMI cables and whatnot. We're at a point where we have to use dongles, hashtag dongle life. That's it guys for this one. What do you guys think about Apple? Let me know in the comments below. Until the next video, remember to turn your tech on. This has been BenCat, signing out.